So let's look at some examples on this reflecting a function in the axis. Okay, so here's an example of a parabola. And this parabola is going to be reflected all over the place. So first of all, let's reflect it in the x-axis. So there's the x-axis, and we're going to reflect it. Now this point, what's the coordinates of this point? Well, it used to be uh, 3 and 18. So 3, 18. And that is now going to be reflected in the x-axis. Here we go, all the way to the other side. And now it is still 3, but this time it is negative 18. Okay. We can also see that this parabola has a negative shape, a frowning shape, and when it's reflected, it will now look like this. Here we go. More or less look like that, and that will be the reflection, let's call it GX, a new function. And this GX, if you are able, you can just look at the information right here, it's got the same shape. but. Um, um, and you'll be able to find the formula but if we just simply look at what we just learned that if I reflect in the x-axis then what happens well my new function come on uh, my new function gx is equal to and what happens every y value gets multiplied with a negative so this is the y values that must be multiplied with a negative one so negative one times f of x. Now we know f of x is this whole business negative 2x minus 3 squared plus 18. Okay, here we go. And multiplying in that negative now gives me a positive 2. x minus 3 squared. Do you notice how this is not affected? Okay, which means the x value or the symmetry axis is still the same. Sorry, and that's not negative. Uh, positive, it's negative 18. That becomes a negative 18 as I distribute this negative 1. And that's exactly what I see here. There's my uh, minimum value this time. It used to be a maximum of 18. Now it's a minimum of 18. And there we go. That's the function formula for GX. Okay, how about us reflecting any one of the two in the uh, Y axis? Let's take G of X and we reflect g of x in the y-axis. So now the turning point goes this way and where I used to have my symmetry axis at 3, now my symmetry axis will be at negative 3. Okay. Since it passes through that point, that point is not going to change, but this leg is coming to this side so that it looks Ooh, like this. Well, my best attempt. And this will still be negative 18. That will still be negative 18. But now the new coordinate for the turning point is negative 3, comma, negative 18. So let's call this one h of x. And h of x, we notice, is the reflection of g of x in the y-axis. Now remember then every x value that was positive now becomes negative or that was negative becomes positive. So h of x is the same as g of x but every x value gets multiplied with a negative 1. So if I now go and do that I see that means everywhere where I see an x I must replace it with negative x. So there's 2, instead of x I must replace negative x, minus 3 squared minus 18. So why is this still a negative 3? Shouldn't that become positive 3? Well, notice that we don't have the format of a x minus p squared plus q because of that negative. So we must get rid of that negative somehow. and. The way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to take out negative 1 as a common factor. So I have 2. If I take out negative 1 as a common factor, I get negative 1. Remember, I'm still inside this bracket that is being squared. So inside I'm left with x plus 3. And all of this gets squared. Plus, oh sorry, minus 18. 
and there we go now I can distribute or actually just write this this bracket out twice and there will be a negative 1 times a negative 1 that will give me positive 1 and then the bracket x plus 3 will also be written twice so it would be x plus 3 squared so that in the end I just have x plus 3 squared minus 18 this might have confused you a little bit but just maybe pause the video have a look at it until you feel 100% confident that, that you know what I did right there um, and then we are going to go on to exponentials, reflecting the exponential function. And that really makes it much easier to understand the exponential function. Okay, so reflecting the exponential function, uh, let's look at a simple one like y is equal to 2x. 2 to the power x, and let's just get the color a bit brighter. There we go. y is equal to 2 to the power of x, or not y, let's call it fx. There we go, that's a bit brighter. 2 to the power of x. Now, you should know, hopefully, that this is the shape that it makes, more or less. That's the shape. And what is the x-intercept? Sorry, the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So, we are cutting it at 1. So what is this function formula going to be if I reflect it in the x-axis? So I'm going to reflect it in the x-axis which means it's going that away. Okay. And now I'm going to try my best to reflect it. There we go. And now it, instead of intersecting at 1, it is negative 1. So this is now gx. That's now a new function that we made. What would the function formula for gx be? Well, remember, gx is the reflection of f of x in the x-axis. When I reflect in the x-axis, all the y values become 0, which means every f x value will be multiplied with a negative. And therefore, I simply get that gx is negative 2 to the power of x. As simple as that. Okay. How about if we reflect f in the x as the y-axis? Okay. So reflecting it in the y-axis means that this leg pointing upwards will now point upwards on the negative side of the um, for x, and it will tend to the positive x-axis. Will now look like that. Let's call that h of x. Okay, it will still intersect at 1 because that point doesn't go nowhere. Okay, and h of x is now the reflection of f in the y axis, which means every x value gets multiplied with a negative 1. That becomes negative x. Now, what does that look like? Well, have a look here. This becomes 2 to the power of negative x. And this is also where you now notice, okay, but I know that a negative exponent actually means dividing. Okay, so this is actually 1 over 2 to the power of x, or you can also write it as 1 over 2 both to the power of x. Okay, which means that now I see my base, instead of being greater than 1, my base is lower than 1, smaller than 1, which is why I have this downward sloping exponential function. Now, there's one more shape, and that shape is if I take this downward sloping exponential function and I reflect this function in the x-axis. In other words, that one goes there. Let's see what that will look like. That one now will look like this tending to the positive x-axis but on the negative side and there we go and let's call what haven't we used let's call this L of x if I may L of x and we notice that L of x is now h of x reflected here so in other words h of x is reflected in the x-axis which means the y values get the negative 
and let's see what was h h was 1 over 2 to the power of x and that now simply becomes negative 1 over 2 to the power of x and you will also notice that this is the same as reflecting g of x in the y-axis and when I reflect g of x in the y-axis it's when I give g of x the x value in there a negative I'm not going to go through that maybe you can do that on your own but there you go this is a lovely way of looking at um, at the different shapes or forms of the exponential function as it is reflected all over the place cool good luck